as time passes, various extreme liberal economic ideas are taken up by leftists and promoted as progressive. I remember during the 90s, there were some people who claimed to be left writers or even members of the Marxist political economy discussion group online who adopted Hayekian ideas in defence of the market economy. In the last five years, I've seen people claiming that Bitcoin or blockchain are going to be the answers to social problems of socialist economics. Now, when you are criticising people, it's best at first to make charitable assumptions. Here, I'm going to assume, initially, that as its advocates contend, Bitcoin is actually a form of money. Of course, in practice, it isn't. But if it were, that is why Bitcoin could provide no socialist answer to the problems of capitalist economy. So I'm going to go back to absolute basics. I'm going back to the circuit of commodities, something which Marx denoted by the sequence CMC. Now, what did this mean? Just a bit of revision here. Here's Yetunde with her goat. At this stage, the goat is just a use value. A use value to her. Potential source of milk or of meat. She visits the market. So the goat becomes a commodity. She sells it. So she now has money. So we have the first transit that Marx describes. Commodity to money, C to M. But she now spends her money on a cloth, a blue cloth wrap and a dirty, and her second commodity now, which becomes a use value to her. So we've had a circuit, C to M to C, from goat to money to cloth wrap. And we call it a circuit because it started with a commodity and it ends with a commodity. But, as Marx said, this is already potentially unstable. He said that this simplest form of commodity circulation already contains the germ of all future capitalist crises. Now, it's not evident, but look what he says. Suppose instead of spending her coins, Yetunde chose to put her coins in a pot, in a hoard, and save them up. What happens then? Well, Damalola now can't sell her cloth, so commodity circulation is interrupted. And this happens in every capitalist crisis. At one time, people did store their money in pots. Archaeologists uncover hoards every, from year to year, full of old coins that people had stored in pottery pots. With time, money that was once stored in pots gets stored in banks. Giant firms now hold bank deposits rather than buying commodities if they think it's more profitable in the short term to leave their money in the bank they do so and a recession follows and if banks were replaced simply by bitcoin wallets the same could occur, could occur. firms when they thought it unprofitable to invest would hold their value as money and that would interrupt the circulation of commodities. So let's ask why coins have value. If you look at a Kruger Rand, which is one ounce of gold, very valuable coin, 
It's valuable because it embodies a lot of labour by mine workers. What about a Bitcoin? Well, the same thing operates. The value of a Bitcoin is set by the labour needed to mine the coal that powers the Bitcoin mining machines, which are currently mainly located in Kazakhstan, because that is the country with the cheapest coal supplies. Bitcoin is a deliberate digital reincarnation of the gold standard. So let's compare a Krugerrand with a Bitcoin. The Bitcoin advocates are very much against fiat currency and they say Bitcoin is better because it's not a fiat currency. Well clearly neither Krugerrands nor Bitcoin are fiat currency. The, the Bitcoin advocates say Bitcoins are independent of the banks. Banks don't create it. Well, banks don't create Krugerrands either. They say Bitcoin payments can't be blocked by governments. And of course we've seen how governments have blocked the bank deposits of Russia and other states recently. But the same is true of Krugerrands. Same is true of gold. So, when the Russians wanted to avoid the blockage of their accounts, they could settle on saying they must insist on payment for their commodities being in gold. Both of them are speculative assets which have an unstable value. Neither of them is legal tender. What does that mean? Two important things. One is they don't act as a universal equivalent. The value is always translated into the value in dollars or some other state money. And they're not legal for the settlement of all debts. You can incur a private debt that you promise to settle in Krugerrands if you want. But the difference is that um, state money is legal for the settlement of all debts, in particular public debts, debts to the state, tax debts. States are not accepting Bitcoin in payment of taxes. They both have exchange value. But only a Krugerrand has a use value. A, u a Krugerrand can in principle be melted down and the gold used for commercial purposes, for instance plating the contacts of printed circuit boards. So Krugerrands are a commodity, Bitcoins are not a commodity. Now what would happen if Bitcoin did become legal tender as its advocates wish. Well, if you look back to the period of the gold standard we get an indication. During the period of the gold standard you had non-fiat money but you still had commercial crises. You had the Great Depressions of the 1870s and 1930s. Consider what would happen if all mortgages in the US over the last 10 years had been taken out in Bitcoin. It's clear that almost all homeowners would have been ruined as the Bitcoin value rose. The Bitcoin value would be far above their potential income and their ability to pay it. But we saw something like that before. We saw it both at the end of the 19th century in the United States and we saw it in the 1930s when there was mass foreclosure on farm mortgages. Mass foreclosure because the mortgages were reckoned in what was essentially a gold standard. And when commodity prices were falling relative to gold, the value of the mortgage that you owed to the bank went up. This would be even more extreme with Bitcoin. 
the tendency of firms to hold back from investment will be even more extreme because holding their assets as money, as Bitcoin, would pay more than purchasing means of production which were depreciating. You would get mass dispossession as was seen in the 1930s except it wouldn't be just dispossession of farmers it would be people being thrown out of their houses on a mass scale. The Contrary to what the advocates of Bitcoin claim were it to become legal tender, the control of the banks, of finance capital, would be re-established in the most vicious way possible. Debts would become debts in a, that were measured in an appreciating asset, which no one could hope to pay back. And in the end, the banks would own everything.